In the previous video, we have implemented our roulette wheel selection and calculate fitness functions for our genetic algorithm inside our map brain class. Now let's talk about the crossover parents function. So the crossover process is a way of mixing the genes from two parents into two new uh, children. And basically, we are going to choose a point, the crossover point inside our obstacle array. And we are going to say that, okay, let's take this many obstacles from the first parent, so first candidate map that we have chosen uh, to reproduce, and put it in the ch child number one, and take the second part of the same Boolean array, and let's put it in the child uh, two uh, as the uh, its obstacle array, and do the same thing with the second parent. So those two children are the mix between those two parents. So basically, uh, we have inherited the genes, which are in our case just the uh, obstacles on our array. So we have generated new maps, basically. And hopefully, this will create for, for us a map with a better chances of giving us a, a longer path. So let's go back to our map brain script. Okay, let's find our crossover method. And it should be somewhere around here. Here it is. So what do we have here? We are passing the two parents and two children. And for now we are going to say child1 equals parent1 dot deep clone. So we are basically cloning our parent1 as the child1. As a child2 we are going to uh, copy the parent2 deep clone. So now this generates for us a new candidate maps and we are going to say if our random dot value so uh, we are generating a value from 0 to 1 so we are choosing a random value and we are checking if this is less than crossover rate percent so our percent is set to be 100% for us our uh, current settings so every ch uh, child will be the result of the crossover but we could have set it lower so some children will be exact copies of its parents and this can have its benefits depending on what you want to achieve but the basic notion is that we have to play around with those settings and see which one will give us the best results the results that we want. So for us, we are going to cross over every child. So every child will be a result of a crossover. And we are going to first set int num bits. This is the how many bits are in our solution. So our solution has parent one dot obstacle array dot length. So this is how many genes we have in our chromosome and in our terms how many obstacles we have in our obstacles array. And now we are going to select a point of the crossover. So what we have seen in the slide, so crossover point equals random dot range and we can only choose a value from zero to number of bits. So now there are two things we want to do. We want to do up until the crossover index to set child1 positions to be parents1 uh, positions. Uh, so child1 obstacles should be parent1 obstacles and child2 obstacles should be parent2 obstacles up until that point. But since we are already deep cloning the parent1 into child1 and parent2 into child2, they already contain those. So what it leaves us is for i equals the crossover index up to the number of bits, so the up until the uh, length of our obstacle array. And now we want to switch. So our child one should have obstacles of parent two from the crossover point up until the end of our obstacles array. So we would like to call a method like place object, place obstacle, 
and we do not have this method so what we want to pass here is the index so i and parent to is obstacle at and we do not have this method as well and pass it this index so we want to check if at this position is the obstacle and if it is return true and then place this true inside our obstacles array of our child so let's alt enter on this method and generate and again alt enter and generate is obstacle at and we want to implement both of those methods so let's go into uh, again uh, yep we should be able to now go into this method go uh, to the definition of is obstacle at for example and basically we are going to return obstacle obstacle array index our i so we are going to return the value in our obstacle array and for place obstacle we are going to say instead obstacle array at index i will be set to and here we instead of object we will be passing bool value bool and here is obstacle will return bool value and let's make those to public instead of internal okay great so at the end we want to set this bool value uh, let's say is obstacle instead of p we're going to say that it is obstacle okay great we can go back using this arrow and that's basically it for child one what now for child two well basically the opposite so child two place obstacle at index i and take it from parent one is obstacle at x i so we are changing the child's one from parents one obstacle array from this crossover index up until the end of this array into the uh, obstacles array from parent two and vice versa so we are crossing over both those two children to have part of the obstacles of parent one and part of the obstacles of parent two and hopefully this will generate us a better looking candidate maps that can produce a longer path with more obstacles and uh, all the parameters that we want to set and now last method that is unimplemented is this show result so let's quickly implement it what we are going to say here is is algorithm running we will set it to be false because it has finished running we're going to say de debug dot log the test solution at generation and we are going to print the best map generation number plus with score and plus best fitness score all times next what we want to do is call var data equals our best map dot return map data so we get the data from our best candidate map and we also want to call map visualizer dot visualize our map so to show it on the screen so we are going to say best map dot read and data and visualize using prefabs of course we want it to be uh, i think we have this visualize using prefabs no it will be true so we are not visualizing using those uh, uh, placeholders rather than we are always using prefabs let's debug dot log the path length and let's set it to uh, plus data dot path what else can we see let's debug dot log the number of corners corners um, corners count and plus data dot corners list dot count and we want to print the time it took to generate it so end date let's set it to be date time now okay 
and let's say long elapsed ticks equals and data ticks minus start data ticks and start data we have initialized it on clicking our button for generating our uh, map brain that that button doesn't exist yet but it will be soon implemented and let's say time span equals elapsed uh, elapsed uh, time elapsed span uh, this will be the name of the variable equals our new time span of elapsed ticks and now we can debug that log a time needed to run uh, this algorithm or maybe genetic optimization and we are going to say elapsed span total seconds because basically we want to know how long it took to generate this map so now we should be able to go up and call this method at the start so let's say we can run algorithm to test it out and before we can do that in unity we need to create a so let's go back to unity and it gives me some warning so let's double tap on it and i think uh, we are not using the near corner value in our fitness function yet but we can add it later so let's go back to unity and basically what we need to do is to create a new empty game object so let's call it rain okay and let's now drag our brain uh, map brain class to it okay we have some preset values so what we need to do is to add our map visualizer and we need to also disable the map generator for our uh, map uh, brain to run okay so if everything went smoothly and in your implementation you should be able to press play and see some results coming up so we have uh, 10 iterations and in about one second we have generated this map so let's try stopping the game and choosing left and left for example and let's try playing it out and we can see that this is a little bit too short path so let's increase the population size and possibly let's change the number of corners for example 4 to 10 okay and we do not have the possibility to easily test it so for now let's try out 30 and let's maybe give it 20 generation limit let's try it out if we can achieve something useful and we can see that the path is a little bit longer so we will play around with those uh, weights uh, further along the uh, videos but for now let's implement another button so another custom inspector that will be uh, much help when we want to test this because then we are going to be able to just regenerate the map uh, the map on the fly so this is coming up in the next video